Race really to the marshmallow. Good. Lord of mercy, I am the alligator bandit. So after stopping in Houston for a couple days to say hi to our good friend from Australia and drop in on one of our yoga classes, we hit the road again, direction, New Orleans. Ça y est, on est en Louisiane, les gars. The Cajuns were a French-speaking people who originally came down to Louisiana from Nova Scotia. Now some still speak Cajun French, but you can hear the influence French had on Cajun accents in English in the rhythm and the melody. Alright guys, we have officially made it to New Orleans. Is that how you say it? I don't know. Yeah, you know, when you've been to New Orleans. This and uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really know much about this place besides that they have amazing food. I've watched Anthony Bourdain here. And Is there a more important city traditionally in American culinary history? Probably not. I've seen the places eaten at, and the oysters, the beignets, the crawdad, crawfish. <laughs> it is filled with juicy jazz and squalling trumpets and tiny, tiny little crawdaddy. And that's what we're looking forward to the most, if I'm honest, is the food. Besides the food, I think we're just gonna cruise around, see what we run into. There's a ton of shops everywhere. There's a lot of people out, it's Saturday, and uh, just to see what we come across. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Oh my god. Look at all that powdered sugar. So we're starting our New Orleans experience here at Cafe Beignet. We thought we were going to check out Cafe Du Monde, but unfortunately the line is down the street like crazy. And of course I've got my Cafe Au Lait, which is just coffee and milk. But it's really, really good. Alright, my first beignet ever. to bleep me out. Is it your jam or what? It's so good. What the heck? <laughs> Those closed eyes. Beignet no play. All right, what's your favorite part about it? <laughs> Texturally, it's got a lot going on. The outside edge, there's a little bit of fries. It's a little bit of a, not crispy, but it has a little crunch to it a little bit. And then the inside is just nice and doughy and chewy. And, and then you have obviously more powdered sugar than you need, really, as, as it's spilling over the edges, but dangerously good. Beignet, done that. So we had to do it, we had to try Cafe du Monde to see how it compares with Cafe Beignet. Right off the bat, unfortunately there's no indoor seating here. Cafe Beignet we can sit inside comfortably, but here we'll just be okay with sitting outside. The whole inside's closed. So that's what that one looks like. Cafe Beignet. Shut up. Cafe Beignet wins, well, in my ones, book, hands down. These ones are pre-packed and come in a bag where the other ones came out fresh. And the other ones came out fresher, and I will say, texturally, Cafe Beignet, first of all, I know they make them by hand. Here, I don't know if these are made by hand. Well, they told us they didn't. I don't know. I know it's during COVID, so we're probably not getting the full experience, but I have to give Cafe Beignet the win over Cafe Du Monde. Their beignets are just better, at least in my opinion. We're actually going to head back to Cafe Beignet. It just, texturally, it wasn't like crunchy and crisp and fresh like Cafe Beignet. So we're willing to walk in the rain two blocks. Day in the bayou. To go get 
our cafe beignet beignets because they are that good. <laughs> look at this. Look at all that sugar. Look at the presentation. I can just tell by just poking at it. Oh my god, that is heaven. Well, it's fresh for sure. It's fresh. Sorry, Cafe Du Monde. Not this time. This is Cafe Du Monde, and this is Cafe Beignet. Now, now I want to do that place first. Nathan and Olivia, where y'all from? Uh, California. What part? Uh, Northern California, near Sacramento. Yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay. Well, now it's love that makes Nathan treat Olivia the way that he do. Olivia, ain't Nathan good to you? There's nothing in this world Nathan wouldn't do for you. Olivia, ain't Nathan good to you? He bought you a Rolex for Christmas <laughs> and a diamond ring. A BMW with everything. <laughs> is he the real deal? Yes, he is. You're going to be with him another 40 years. Yes. I think I found it. Acme Oyster House. Baked oysters. <laughs> Olivia's not as excited as me. She's not a huge oyster fan. I'm obsessed. And uh, as you guys can see, there is a little bit of a line, which is always a good sign. It means it's the bomb. It's the bomb. It's delicious. This is Nathan's food dream day. I'm so pumped. All right, so I just ordered half a dozen raw oysters and half a dozen char-grilled oysters. I've heard they have this butter sauce. It's next level. And if you're in New Orleans, I've heard that Acme Oyster House is the place to go. I will confirm that or rebuke that after this meal. I'm gonna try the raw oysters first, but these I know I've heard you gotta wait a little bit because they're gonna burn yeah, your lip. Gonna burn your they're mouth. gonna burn the lip. Best cocktail sauce I've ever had. There's definitely some horseradish in there. Char-grilled oysters, this is what they're really known for, I think. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I already ate one before uh, Lily turned on the camera, and it blew my mind. So <laughs> I'm gonna pretend like this is my first one. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what is it like? This butter herb sauce, different multiple cheeses in there. It's rich, it's delicious. I could eat oysters every day if it was this. Every day. <laughs> Yo, those were the best oysters of my freaking life. <laughs> Usually, I don't like oysters. I think they're fishy, I don't really like the texture, but those, those were damn good. If I must say so myself, they had a certain je ne sais quoi. It's a Saturday here and it's wild. Even though it's COVID, people are out and screaming and yelling and twerking and doing all these crazy stuff. <laughs> You ain't seen no New Orleans bread. I've never seen New Orleans breasts. You never taste the breast milk. It's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back at it again with some more food. I feel like we're on this endless food tour here in New Orleans. This is what I'm probably looking forward to the most. And that's crawfish. <laughs> Crawdad. There's a lot of places. This is one that I heard is pretty good, so. Uh, we went to another one earlier and they already sold out completely, so you gotta be quick here in New Orleans because they like the food. <laughs> Spin it, there you go, spin it, there you go. Okay. And then you basically remove a little bit of that edge right there. Like this? Yeah, and then that piece that piece should come out. There you go. There oh. it is. You're basically getting the edit in one bite. Yeah, there you go. Watch way too many YouTube videos on how to eat. Wow. When you suck the juice out of the head, you squeeze the head at the same time. We 
ended up getting not just crawfish, but also a po' boy. Because when in New Orleans, you gotta get the, the shrimp po' boy. How's it? All right, we're officially in a food coma. And what do you have to say? <laughs> All day. I can't think. <laughs> All day has been about food, but you know what? That's what you can expect when you come down here to New Orleans. All right, so I wanted to fill you guys in with how we found our RV park for New Orleans. And if I'm completely honest, it was more of a challenge than I'm used to. Typically, it's not very hard for me to find a really good RV park, but in regards to New Orleans, there's not many that are near the city center. And the ones that do exist are sort of grittier and not so nice. So I had to look a little bit beyond that, and I found one in a town nearby in Harvey. You basically take a 20 minute drive to the Algiers Point Ferry, and then take the ferry across, which is only five minutes. So about 25 minutes from like the French Quarter. But the RV park is super clean, super nice, safe. I'm in direct contact with the owner of the RV park, Scott, he's a great guy, super down to earth and uh, we just love it there. So if you don't mind driving the extra 25 minutes, I would recommend staying at the Bayou Barateria RV Park. All right, so we've just arrived at Johnny's Po' Boys, and I know we had a Po' Boy yesterday, but sometimes you just gotta have another one. There's a sandwich in New Orleans, and there'll really be only one, and that's the Po' Boy. I've heard that Parkway Po' Boys, Johnny's Po' Boys, uh, there's, a, there's a lot in this area that are really good, but I heard this one is, might be the best. So the New Orleans Po' Boys started during hard times. Okay, 1929, the height of the Great Depression. Oh, beautiful, thank, thank you. you. Oh, it is here. It is here. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's talking to the GoPro. All right, so I got the Voodoo Shrimp Special. They're known for their fried shrimp. This is a, a slight twist on that where they make their own salt with brown sugar, garlic, and hot sauce and different spices. She highly recommended it, so hey, I'm sure this is gonna be delicious. Unraveling of it, ooh. Oh, sure. You gotta see the inside of this right here. Oh, <laughs> my God. All right, here we go. Mm. Wow. How does it compare to yesterday's? So much better. <laughs> it's on a different level here. The one thing though that you notice, I think what makes New Orleans special, is the quality of their shrimp. Comes straight from the Gulf, straight from the Mississippi River. And it's just a better quality shrimp altogether. So, man, this is, I love mayo and lettuce. It just, oh. It looks heavy, but it's actually quite light. Does the flavor kind of taste like the voodoo chips that I like? Because I think, no? I've never had those chips. No. Amazing. <laughs> Are you nervous? No, I'm excited. It's like I'm excited, but I'm like, I don't really know what I'm getting myself into because from the one video I saw on YouTube, I got in the water and was literally wrestling the alligator. No, he wasn't. I swear to God. Maybe not wrestling him, but he was like feeding him, which also freaks me out. Also, Nathan tried to mess with me and say I had to wear a helmet for this ride, which also really freaked me out. And then I Googled it and that's, you know. Close. Watch him. 
to the voice more than the command than what, than what he wants to eat. Oh, be careful, please. Oh my God. Come on. You got to open up. Oh. It wants your hand, not the marshmallow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, every time. You think there's something? Yeah, wow. She used to be fed my hand. He listens to your voice. Oh, oh, oh yeah. He, he went to Finally. Oh, he just got one. Hey, oh. dude! Wow. Now that's big, there. Look at it. Wow! Oh my God! Huh? Fall in here, you ain't got a chance. Wow! Look at him, but fourteen hundred pound a bite. Nice big male. The male gets bigger than the female. There's a well-known New Orleans accent that sounds similar to New York accents in some ways. It's called "yat," which comes from the phrase "where yat." The only one that's letting me get close. You know what I mean? I don't want to fool with him yet. We really will touch him and do different stuff. See down here, we don't say soda, pop, or none of that. We say cold drink. Oh, baby, go get me a cold drink out there for Jarita. <laughs> 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 